Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about the top four reasons why structural equation models fail in practice. My name is Christian Geiser. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to structural equation modeling or other latent variable methods. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, please hit the like button in case you like this video and check out the description for additional videos and workshops that I offer. In this video, I want to discuss the four main reasons as I see them for why structural equation analyses can fail in practice. And so the first reason why beginners with structural equation models or others often have trouble is because of a sample size that is insufficient to estimate their model. So structural equation modeling is a technique for large samples. So it's typically not a good idea to run a structural equation model with a sample size of 20 or 30 people and even higher sample sizes that are around 100 can often be too small when you have a more complex model. So it's a large sample technique. And if you want to know more um, as to whether your sample size that you're targeting or the sample size that you're able to collect is sufficient, then please check out my mini workshop on sample size planning in SEM that is linked in the description. And in that workshop, I show how you can run a simulation in the M plus software to determine the minimum or required sample size for your analysis. And it's pretty straightforward to run such a simulation. So check out that video if you're unsure about your sample size. Now, the second issue that often occurs that um, beginners especially often run into is that they try to estimate a structural equation model that is not identified, that is, as we say, under identified. And so this can have essentially two reasons. So or, um, this can have two different components. One reason why a model may be under identified is just simply because there aren't enough, there isn't, the model is too complex and there isn't enough information to estimate all the model parameters, regardless of what kind of data you collect. So the model, so to say, is intrinsically under identified. It estimates too many parameters or it tries to estimate parameters that aren't identifiable for some other reason. And so then the problem would persist no matter whether your sample size is large or whether you have um, and a different data set, a different population in that case. So say you have to revise your model because it can't be identified. And a simple example of that would be if you estimate, if you're trying to estimate a single factor model and you only have two indicators and you want to estimate the loadings of your two indicators, then that model is intrinsically under identified. There's no way you can estimate both of those loadings when you have just two indicators and a single factor. And so the other component to under identification could be so called empirical under identification. So it may be the case that your model as such is actually identifiable given the right data, so to say, so given um, that your uh, sample or your data will provide enough information, but intrinsically, it is under identified because of the nature of the data. And that is something that is a little bit more tricky because you wouldn't see from looking at the model, from looking at the uh, path diagram, you wouldn't be able to say, oh, this model is under identified because it is in principle identifiable. However, your data doesn't have enough information to identify it. An example would be if you have a two factor model and each factor has two indicators and the factors are correlated you estimate the loadings for at least one indicator per factor, but your two factors in your data are not substantially correlated. And then the model would be empirically under identified because this model with two factors and two indicators per factor is only identified if there is a substantial correlation, non-zero correlation between the two factors. And so if your data doesn't have such a correlation, then the model would be empirically under identified and then you would also run into an identification problem. Now, this is a problem that oftentimes then results in an error message in your software. So you would often be able to see it. So for example, M plus would 
um, for an underidentified model, say the model may not be identified and I couldn't estimate standard errors or parameters may not be trustworthy. So whenever you see a message like that, then definitely think of that issue that your model may be either globally underidentified or empirically underidentified due to the data. And then you can look into that. Now, notice though that not all programs give you a message that um, is very informative for every underidentified model. Sometimes you get messages that don't directly tell you, okay, this is the problem that I have um, an underidentification problem. So, but it's always something to think of when you get a problem of convergence with your model or when you have other things in your model that look um, strange. Like, for example, when you have standard errors that are very high, then it could also be a sign that the model is borderline um, under identified. Okay, what are um, the remaining problems that typically occur or causes of problems that we see often? Um, another issue is when a model is overly complex. So when there are many, many parameters in a model that is related to the under identification issue or can be related. So when you try to estimate something that has many factors, maybe you have main factors, and then you have method factors, and you have all kinds of correlations in your data, then there may just not be enough information in your data to estimate all those parameters. Or so some of those parameters may be zero or close to zero. And then the program, the software program may say, I, I, this model doesn't converge. I can't find the information to uh, provide parameter estimates for all those different parameters that you're trying to estimate. So when you have a very complex model, then or medium complex or something like that. That is something to think about. And it's always a good idea to try an SEM that is smaller, that has fewer variables, that has more simplicity at the beginning. And then if that works reasonably well, then you can move on to more complex models. That way you would see better at which point maybe the model becomes overly complex and uh, can no longer be estimated. So whenever you see um, a message such as no convergence or something like that, or you see high standard errors again in your output for some model parameters or other um, estimates that don't seem to be valid or that seem strange, then that is also something to think of uh, whether maybe your model is too complex. And then finally, one problem that beginners often run into is that their targeted structural equation model doesn't fit well. It shows a horrible fit and um, they don't know why. So why does this model not fit? And this is often related to the previous um, point that it may be a model that is just simply too large, that has too many variables, too many implicit restrictions, maybe too many indicators for some or all of the factors so that this model has a lot of degrees of freedom. And then as a result, there are many, many testable constraints in the model. There are many restrictions on the covariance structure and or the mean structure and the data doesn't support um, all these restrictions. And so, for example, when you have a factor with 15 indicators or even a factor with 10 indicators, then that is a very, very, or that implies very, very restrictive assumptions about the unidimensionality of that factor, meaning all those indicators would have to be um, unidimensional and have no correlated errors, no residual um, variance that is systematic and related maybe with the other indicators. And that is something that is very, very difficult to achieve in practice. So also something to think of when you have a non-fitting model, then oftentimes that is related to the size of the model, to the complexity of the model, and um, the fact that there are too many restrictions in there potentially. And so again, a good um, way to address this is to start with a simpler model, maybe do one factor at a time. If you have enough indicators to achieve identification that way or pairwise, having two factors at a time to see if that works. And so build up your structural equation model slowly rather than estimating 15 factors at once, each with 10 indicators. That is something that almost certainly will fail. And so this is one of the most frequent beginner mistakes that I see in practice is that people try to do too much at once, that they have models with too many indicators, too many factors. And that is something that's very prone 
to problems. I hope you found this video useful to troubleshoot when you do SEM. If you did, then please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check out the description for additional videos and workshops. And I'll see you next time.